All right, I am Spectacular the Silver Stack, and I'm here with Coin Guy again in his shop in Spring Hill, Florida. Guy, how's it going? Everything's great. Merry Christmas to everyone. Merry Christmas. What's, what's going year. on over here? This is my helper. That's <laughs> Santa. Jeez. Some music for the background. Fantastic. Let's talk about uh, some coins and silver and all kinds of stuff going on. How about that? Good enough. Good right. enough. Cool. What, uh, what's going on in the uh, shop here? And it's been a busy, uh, last talk to you a couple of weeks ago, it's been a busy couple of weeks. Uh, we moved just about everything we highlighted last time. Uh, I've gotten a lot of good phone calls back. I had a half a dozen people just thanking me for the, just for thanking me for the video. Um, they loved it, you know, they enjoyed what I had to say. Um, and I had one guy drive here, came down from Tennessee and uh, he left uh, Disney, and he came in to see us, took a picture with me, and uh, and moved on. I mean, that's pretty that's pretty cool. Things have been good. It's been uh, it's just been that kind of uh, that kind of a year, really. It's been a great year, and uh, and here we are now. I bought a lot of silver in the last few days, so I have plenty of nine nine nine. I have um, maples. I have uh, maple leaves. I have ninety percent. We've got silver in house. We got quite a bit. You know, we're not really bullion dealers. We get bullion in, but we buy and sell it. But basically, we're the old type coin collectors where somebody comes in and they need a 1911 S penny and a 1931 D penny. We take the time to find that for you, and we'll put it together for you. Um, and you know, business has been very good. I think we send out 400 packages now uh, a year. We do a lot of online between the web and phone calls. So business has been good. That's awesome. So you've, you've kind of evolved a little bit. Like you had to appeal to different buyers. And so silver, you know, a lot of people come in for silver that lately. Silver is still king. I mean, I had, a per, I had two people, three or four people in the last three days who were first time buyers. And they wanted to understand what silver is about. So I explained to them about 90% silver, constitutional silver, which are your dimes, your quarters, and your halves, uh, silver eagles, uh, one ounce silver of other countries like the silver eagles, like the maples. Uh, and then we talked about bullion, which is 999 or 10 ounce bars, things of this nature. And well, I said, what's the pluses and the minuses? And I explained that when we buy these back, we have we can't pay over silver for this stuff because we've got to hold it for 30 days. I mean, I bought 700 ounces the other day of 999, and uh, I'm holding this until the day after New Year's. So what do you think I'm going to pay you? I've seen silver drop three dollars in the last three weeks. Um, I paid little back, but not much. But you know, you still have to hold it for for weeks, and you need to leave yourself a little room. You you know you can't if if silver is at 2240 and you buy it for 22 and we wind up three weeks from now and it's 20 you know what am i selling i'm making 50 cents an ounce it's not a lot of money when you're lending out tens of thousands of dollars yeah. you got to be careful and that's why i explained to them this stuff might be cheaper but it's a lot easier to move maple leaves silver eagles you know it becomes six of one half a dozen of another you'll pay less for this but when you go to sell it, you're going to get less. It all basically equates. Yeah. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, it all works out. So it's it's what your own mind is. Uh, I had a phone call today looking for gold coins. I didn't have them. I have silver. And they're concerned they bought silver during the year for me, and they're worried about the weight of it all. Yeah, that takes into concern. You know, I don't know what the future is, but I do see a lot of crazy in the world. So... People are fearful. They're worried about inflation. They're worried about all kinds of things. And, um, you know, if you're going to invest a lot, a lot of money, you need to buy some gold in because it takes a lot of a lot less room up. I bought two gold coins in the last two days, and I sold the last. I sold. I bought one. Within 15 minutes, a guy came in and bought both of them. Yeah. They were gone. They had no more gold. Um, as I said, we basically 
are there for the collector, but we get everything in. Just call us from time to time. We'll see what you can find, and we'll work with you. And people bring in a lot of, a lot of interesting stuff comes in. Uh, you don't know what you're going to see from day to day. Um, it's just, you know, just amazing. Especially the older stuff that comes in. Some of the newest stuff was stuff like this that I picked up in the last day or so. What do we got here? Oh. These are maples. Canadian maples. Very nice. Here's some silver. Here's what if some stuff I bought yesterday came in. A bunch of foreign. Now, how old is this can? Edgeworth Extra High Grade Sliced Pipe Tobacco, huh? Yeah, sliced pipe tobacco. I think that's, look at this. Look I'm, at this I'm not a smoker. What is sliced tobacco? I don't know. I think that's, <laughs> is that maybe chewing? No, it's pipe tobacco. I don't know. I don't know either. And then I had these. We got to get our tobacco experts. These jars had come in a while ago, but it's the first time I really looked. Borden's Coffee. And we know Borden as the milk. Milk. Yeah. And now we're doing My father used to be a milkman for Borden's 50 years ago. A milkman? Milkman. So they went, uh, what, door to door and popped the milk? Delivered milk. You don't remember that? Wow. That was before my time. When when we first had my son Brian, we got milk delivered to us. And the guy would come and he'd put it in a little box by the door. And he would. they delivered milk, cottage cheese, butter. We usually just got fresh milk delivered. A couple of, I don't remember what it was. A couple of bottles twice a day, twice a week, whatever it was. And it was like a aluminum cap on top you pulled off. But yeah, gla and they were glass jars. And uh, I'm talking for over 40 years ago. But yeah, that's how it came. <laughs> it came, the milkman used to love it. I gotta have my milk like so cold, otherwise I don't want it. So I'd imagine that milk, you know, sitting there on your front porch. We well, see, I even remember years ago being in the food business. I remember looking at milk containers 50 years ago when it said the calories were like 200 calories for an eight ounce glass. Now you looks 150. Because there was a time when you would get fresh milk and there'd be a layer of cream at the top. Yeah. That's all gone now. I mean, that's that's just not, you know, they dilute and they, 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 they whatever you want to call it. Sometimes you can raise the price. Sometimes you put less in the package or you just cut the quality. Whatever works. I guess you can call that inflation, deflation or you know, or you're just cutting the value of what you're getting, diluting That's it. terrible. But, uh, but I have this available. I have, this is something I had bought the other day. This is cool. Yeah, that's cool, interesting. You're not selling that, are you just keeping that? No, it's on the shelf, I just, cool. It is cool. There you go. Not just silver quarters, rolls of proof quarters. Proof quarters, so you 90% proof. Yep, 90% proof quarters. Nice. These are state ones, but I think there's a couple. I think I see, we this is great to couple. see, guy, because you never, like, you know, hardly yeah. have the silver in the store. 92. Now we got it. What's that? 93. Yeah, there's another yeah, those one here. Pretty. 93. Those aren't going to last very long. Yeah. These are sold for 260 a roll. They're going to have a premium. You don't got to worry about them being worn out. Um, you know, but I picked up a few rolls of this. And uh, this is cool kind of stuff. We just picked this up too. These are very cool. Now there's a big hunk of uh, a big hunk of silver. These are the kilos. Kilo is silver, but these have more. How do I put? It? They have more character than just buying a bar. See, when you buy a bar, you got to hold that 30 days. This oh, I don't have to hold. Geez, I don't want to drop it. Because this has a monetary value. It's Australian. It's a $30 coin, technically. You take 30 bucks for it? Yeah, hold on to that thought. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's weird how they just make a number on these, isn't it? Like, eh, yeah. we'll just do 30 bucks. $30. Here's one of the Queen's Beasts. Here's a 10 ounce Queen's Beast. Cool. Those this are, is a, a lot and of these are like 21s, those. by the way. Yeah. This is for that new grandkid you got. Yeah. Gotta give this in his stocking. It's actually, this probably weighs more than he does. Yes. Yeah, that's a super cool. Super it is cool the Queen's coin. Beast. Queen's Beast. And the Queen's, the Queen Mom is on the back of everything here. Yeah. She's still on half the world's coins. A lot of people don't like her on the uh, on the coins. Can you believe that? Well, if you're independent now, you know, I look at the Australians and Canadians. Give it up. You have your own country now. Yeah. Some people like her. Some people, I think a majority of people on the channel, they comment that they don't like the Queen on the coins. Well, I'd rather see Nicole Kidman on the back of the Australian coin, personally. <laughs> That's just me. That's just you. <laughs> I remember years ago, because I like Nicole Kidman. 
And, uh, and my wife said, hey, you know, your girlfriend is getting divorced. And I said, Nicole? Yeah, she's divorcing Tom Cruise. I didn't mean it, Tom, but you can still play me in the movie. But, uh, you know, but yeah, that was just a running joke that we had. Funny. That is funny. What are, what are these right here? These are silver dollars. I mean, you can buy individual ones for 30 bucks a piece or whatever. These are all mixed dates. These are extra fines. Um, roll is, uh, these make great gifts for the kids. Uh, these are $700 for a roll. So that's $35 a coin. And there'll be mixed dates. There's no 21s in any of these rolls. Those are good examples right there. I like these a lot, guy. And these are AUs. Same idea. But you get a little more detail, a little more shine, a little more pretty. Extra fine AU. Sometimes it's pretty close. Some of these are what I call flea market unks. That means if the lighting ain't right, somebody will try to sell these as an unk. These rolls... These are all 700, these are 750 a roll. And then you have your unks. These are uncirculated rolls. Full roll of uncirculated. Mixed dates, no 21s. Everything summer tone. <laughs> all pre 1904. These are 950 a roll. And with any of these, I'll pay the eBay fee and the, uh, and the shipping. I like to bring it back to basics once in a while. Guy, tell me as a um, you know, coin collector what you're looking for with a good condition Morgan dollar. What you're looking for is you want to have full wings. You want to have luster. It goes back to some of those fake ones we saw. You know, you get a coin like this that this says MS-63. Meanwhile, you've got all this wear in here. You have to have full definition of the of the feathers, of the of the wings. This can't be an unk, uh, and you want to have luster. This really doesn't have any natural luster, and that's why I call it an extra fine instead of an unk sixty three. Uh, you got to be careful when you buy that stuff. Uh, and on the eagles, you're going to find your extra fines are going to have all the high detail. The front will be a little flat on the chest. Sometimes it's strike. You got to be careful. You get into AUs, you're going to have some luster, and you're going to have some detail in there. And then with unks, you've got the shine. You want to have that cartwheel where it runs smoothly across, across the cheek and the face. Gotcha. This is like the, some guys on TV who sell these things. That's <laughs> your basic, you know, extra fine AU and unk. And these are nice to put away and keep. As I said, they, uh, and I'll, you know, I'll pay the eBay and all. I mean, I'll pay the... Uh, the, sh the shipping and the credit card. Gotcha. Uh, and these are what you see. I just bought those. I'm supposed to get a box, a monster box in tomorrow of Eagles. The guy's selling me a monster box of 21s, a split box of type 1 and 2. Let's see if he shows up. Yeah. I get those calls all the time. For Eagles? I've got two boxes. i got three boxes. Yeah. They're out there. They're fishing. They want to see what they get. And I understand that. You bring it in, I'll work out a deal with you, you know. I'm not going to pay you all cash for a box, but you'll get a check in cash, and that everybody's happy. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, it looks nice to see this big pile of silver just here on the table. Yeah. I like seeing that. Gold, I can't show you. I can't. I don't get enough orders for gold. I don't get enough opportunity to buy gold, so I don't get a lot of gold in. But silver, right now, we have, and of course, collector coins. Uh, you know, we have a lot of the semi keys and the keys to the Walk in Liberty set, to the penny set. You know, I probably have 30 1910 S's in various dates in the Lincoln pennies. We're here for the collector. You know, the person who wants to start out, and uh, and that adds up. You know, we get we get phone orders all the time, as I said. I think we had one today. We have a lot of proof sets and min sets on hand right now. I'll bet you between silver and clad, we have well over a 1,000 sets. Wow. No question about it. Tara did an inventory the other day. I think we have a 140 silver proof sets just from 99 to 20. Jeez. We have no 18s. I don't know. I can't get 18s in silver. But we have 140 just silver proof sets in that group. And then in the clad, I bet you I got 30 99s in the back room. I mean, we have well over a thousand silver and clad proof sets. So if you need birth years for somebody 
or you just want to put a bunch together and want a running set, we can accommodate most of it. Uh, we may miss a coin here or there, but basically we should have all of it. Let me ask this uh, for a beginning coin collector. I think you and I have talked about like pennies being a great beginning oh, coin collector. Uh, you know, coin, silver coins, new collectors, what could they get into? You might want to, you can combine the collecting with the hobby. Uh, I mean, you could put Franklin half dollars. You could just about put a set of Franklin half dollars together out of uh, constitutional silver. If you buy $100 worth, I think I have a $100 bag right now of uh, Franklin's in the back. I'll bet you you could just about get a full set out of that. Yeah. Maybe you won't find the 49S or the 52S, but in most cases, there's only 35 coins in the set. So you're going to put together most of that set and you can collect silver at the same time that you're putting, it gives it the hunt. You know, it's all about the hunt and the fun of the game. That's like I was telling somebody today, he said he, said, well, he was here an hour because we were in the middle of, middle of buying a bunch of, uh, you know, sterling silver flatware and plates and, and, and all kinds of serving bowls and odds and ends and just watching it and the, the game, the dance between trying to find out what's real and what isn't. And, uh, you know, 90% of those collections that your grandparents got in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, most of them are silver plate, and they virtually have no value. But uh, the sterling, sterling has value. And then you get the people who don't understand, too, that when you bring me in, yeah, to replace this spoon, and it's Oneida sterling, it might cost you $90, but this spoon is only worth $23. You know, who uses it? you got a generation coming up that eats with their fingers. You know, who really uses silver flatware anymore? Yeah. It becomes almost part of a bygone age. It's pretty in the curio, but it just is what it is. And that's what she had. She had buckets of stuff. And we gleamed through it, and we found uh, she got a few hundred dollars for some of the stuff that was sterling. That's cool. So everybody was happy. She got lunch money, gas, for now at least. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we'll see where we go next year. I like that stuff. I mean, I wouldn't eat with it, like you said, but uh, I would definitely just have it to show and look at. And Well, my wife hauls it out every Christmas. Uh -oh. And, you know, it's it's not sterling. We have silver plate. We can't afford sterling. But uh, it looks pretty. It looks it, it gives part of the festivity of the table. You know, it just makes it look cool. It's not stainless steel. And it is what it is. I mean, I've taken... I've taken sets I've bought and took them to coin shows, and I'll have service for eight or service for ten, and I'm asking like thirty-five bucks with the with the box, and the people turn their nose up to it. I said if you go to Walmart and you get a stainless steel set from a foreign country, sixty-nine piece set is like seventy-five dollars stainless steel. This is silver plate. It's fifty, seventy years old, and it just has a look to it. Yeah. You know, Beautiful. and it's half the price. <laughs> and the young people, how long they stay together, how heavy they are on their stuff. I have grandkids who half the time after they eat the, the ices, they throw the spoon and the cup in the garbage. Yeah. I'm forever replacing teaspoons. What are these? What are you this is the senior voice, the local newspaper. You see them spread out here. You must want to show them off. Well, it's got the nice Christmas in here. Oh, wow. I've got to get on it. This weekend, i got to write an article for them about the unintended consequences of the Wuhan virus. That's why yet, but I write. I'll put a couple of there, a couple of ads in here, a couple of. Uh, I write a couple of articles a year for them. They run my article about love tokens every every February to coincide with uh, Valentine's Day. That's cool. And uh, this stuff pretty much stays the same. I got fifty years in the game now of buying, selling, and trading. Look at this. Check out Spring Hills, the Coin Guy, on YouTube video. We got to put those that uh, you and Tube together. One word. See, he's he's computer literate as much as I am. That's why you get it like that. That's awesome. And it's like two million views. No, you could do give or take for just a article. Article in here, you could just uh, talk about your experience uh, with YouTube. That'd sure. be something cool. That'll yeah. work. Yeah. That'll be. Let's see. I've got to have January covered. February covered. We'll make that the March issue. The and March. This way they can run it right across from my ad. There you go. Maybe it'll put me on the front cover again. Perfect. This helps advertise them. Um, <laughs> The other thing we did very well on, the stuff we showed, was the foreign. And these went over well. Uh, all the books I showed sold. I just want to let people know we have more books. These are the uh, Agriculture and Food Administration. 
And they, these are really pretty books. Yeah. And there's silver coins in here. There's all kinds of stuff in this. These these prices are old. But they they run anywhere in range from $80. I have some that are $350, some that are $150. But there are people who, as I said, who want to talk history. Here's all the, it tells you all the countries that are in these books. And they're pretty. And they sit on the bookcase. You know, you sit in there on the bookcase. Yeah, next pretty. to the books you like. It was very neat. Brazil. Botswana was in this one? Where is Bots Botswana? That's somewhere in Africa. Okay, yeah. I'm sure that the queen's on that coin, too. Jeez. <laughs> Morocco, Yemen. Swaziland? Swaziland. Swaziland. Yeah. That sounds made up. No, the Swaziland's been around a long time. Really? You don't go on vacations there? Look at the size of that coin. I don't uh, I don't go on vacations this there. This one I have listed is worth about 70 bucks. That's a silver coin. That's a beautiful coin right there, guy. Let's see what the back looks like. Yeah, we got, it looks like India to me. Yeah. Here's another biggie. That's cool. Somebody was talking to me about India the other day, about just how much history and unknown there's actually in India. Yeah. I was watching Highlander yesterday. I love Highlander. You and Highlander. And, uh, well, I was watching yesterday, and there was a guy who was one of the Tungis, and he was an immortal. And he was talking about, you know, India has a history that's 3,500 years old. Yeah. You know, India, China, once again, what did they all have in common? Everybody put gold away. Yeah. Wherever you were, and there was no communication. There certainly wasn't any YouTube or, or whatever. You know, there were no phones, but Nothing. everybody knew enough to put that gold away. Half the time, they couldn't even get from, you know, one continent to the other. You know, they were stuck wherever they were, and uh, they liked gold. Everybody liked gold. Weird. They put it in jewelry. They put it in coins. Yeah, silver, gold. They covered gold. things with it. They certainly did. Um, what is the allure? Why does it? Why do people get attracted to this that's stuff? That's the whole thing. Now, I had a coin here that I noticed the other day, and I discounted it. And maybe I shouldn't have discounted it. Yeah. Take Please. your time. I have the ability to edit. You're going to have to edit. <laughs> I look at some of your. You know, this is one of those. This is the thing I go to all the time when I gotta pull things out. I'm gonna look at some of your artwork. I know a lot of people have been asking about your giant Saint Gardens. This was from an old friend of mine, a dealer who passed away, and he sold these to my son, and my son gave me a bunch of these for Christmas one year. I got them here. I got them over there. And then when you go to his store, he's got the same ones, but he kept the silver ones. And he gave me the ones that look like gold. Let's see, you have some more over. Oh yeah. By the, by the entrance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, you know what? It's so funny, like, I don't even notice these things. But yeah, they're beautiful. It's part of the... You sell those? No, <laughs> so. That's for the store. That's everybody who wants to buy my Remington out there. Oh, this thing right here. You got the stocking on it now. Oh, yeah, well, it's Christmas. Silver bells and everything else. You know what's so nice about your store, guy? Is how much room there is here. Oh, yeah, you got plenty of room. I love this. This, this building is 2,400 square feet. I think this display area right here is 800 square feet. We've got a gym, we've got three bathrooms, a kitchen, plenty of store rooms, my own office, and I the office I use all the time because you get the older people who are afraid of who's looking over their shoulder. You go in there, we close the door, you have privacy. We sit and talk and take a half an hour. The kids are running the house out here. And when you have a question, you just knock. Sometimes you go into coin shops and it's so tight, so small, and there's no coins hardly. And you're like, this is a coin shop. You, you want to see coins. Well, it's you want to like see when you go to a pawn shop and they'll have two trays, two red trays of coins. And, you know, it's stuck between the Nintendos and the can openers and the power drills. <laughs> I mean, is this the place you really want to ask any questions about coins? Right. You know, some people are an expert in everything. We buy, we buy gold and silver. We buy jewelry because Nathan's a bench jeweler. And we do jewelry and we do coins. And that's what I, I do. They go hand in hand. As I said, you know, I grew up in places like the 110 Coin Show in Melville on Long Island. And I grew up in Rubenstein's. I watched the way they did business. I learned a lot in 30 years that I was going in and out of there all the time, 35 years. And when I set up my place, I pretty much copied that. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, it's the same theory. Like, when I, do a, when I do a coin show, and we don't do many outside of here, but when we do a coin show, I always bring some jewelry. Because my idea is if the... If the husband can spend $1,000 on a penny, the wife figures she can get a $300 ring on it. Right. <laughs> you know, that it's, it's just goes hand in hand. 
You know, but, uh, uh, real quick, uh, Nathan does a pretty good job in the jewelry, right? Of course. And he's a younger guy. Like, you wonder, like, where did he learn this from? Nate, Vinica. <laughs> what does that mean? That means come here. Oh. That's Italian. Nate, can we talk to you? <laughs> sure. You don't like the you don't like the camera, do you? I'm not a camera person. Not a camera guy. Me neither. That's so uh, we have something in common. So, so I can push in front of it. And you don't. <laughs> hey, for me being on camera, hit that like button, subscribe, and leave a comment for us if you don't mind. I like that. So you're a younger guy. You're about my age. I think what just a smidge older. Yeah. Yeah. The jewelry thing. Where'd you learn that from? Uh, started at a young age actually. I started at 16. Uh, yeah. That's one of my first jobs. Uh, I had a gentleman in my church was a manager of a high-end jewelry store in my hometown and uh, actually got me involved into it. I started, actually started as doing watch batteries and uh, mail and worked my way up there. And after about two years of working there, they changed it over to jewelers, got a new jeweler. Uh, I took interest more under him than the first guy. because The first guy really wasn't there as much as his, my hours. And the new guy was there a lot longer, more hours. And he taught me, Michael Roback taught me how to be a jeweler the first time around. That's cool. The reason why I think of it is because right now we're seeing more than ever that people are losing like talents like that. Like you, you wonder how anything is going to get fixed uh, in the future and who's going to be a jeweler that can fix, you know, jewelry here coming up because nobody seems to want those kind of jobs. They want the things that makes them, you know, a million dollars overnight. And uh, what's going to happen in the future, you know? Yeah. Try to find a watch, a watchsmith. Person working on watch, you can't find anybody around here. I mean, we do watches, we do batteries, or we'll do the wrists, the bands and stuff, but we don't repair watches. Yeah. All those watches I showed you, all gone. All those uh, got pocket a phone watches. call from a friend of my son's. He has kind. He's got the little black book. Made a phone call, sold the guy 123 watches and movements. One price, one deal, shipped it out. Oh, that's cool. You know, it was. It's amazing the power. Of, my son's told me for years you got to get on video. And I can see that. Uh, but would I have any, anything else? Any more questions? For Nathan, I appreciate that. No problem. Merry Christmas. See you, everybody. That's cool. So if you need uh, something repaired or you need any kind of jewelry work, that's your guy right there. Yep, that's Nate. Talented fellow. I think some of the cheapest watches. I mean, you go into certain big uh, places out there, and they want like $79 for a simple repair. You know, with inflation, next year we're going to $24.99. Um, I remember seven years ago we started like ten bucks. Now we're twenty five dollars, but we're still the cheapest around for a simple repair. It's twenty five dollars. Nobody knows how to do anything anymore, guys. It's just getting crazy to me. I mean, yeah. my my friend, she's had to wait. I think it's four days now to get her air conditioning fixed. Well, I know with the watch <laughs> guy because I, I send people all the time. You better you know it's like two weeks. If you need a watch fixed with him, it's two weeks. Two weeks. I mean, because how many watchsmiths are there? I mean, I used to have the guy directly across from me, Samson. He was a watch person. He passed away years ago. I mean, they just it's a generation of people moving on. And I've always been one to believe in working with your hands. I always worked with my hands. Whether I was, uh, you know, cooking, worked with my brother-in-law doing construction, been on roofs, did tile. I always enjoyed working with my hands, and it's a skill set. This isn't as physical but being a jeweler, I'd love for one of my grandkids to be a jeweler, male or female, it doesn't matter. Um, I mean, that's that's still an old world. I mean, the jewelry makers back in India and Egypt 3,000 years ago. It's an old skill set. Uh, they were cooks too. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's that. This is a coin I had showed. Okay. Oh, sorry, I got off on a... That's okay. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> um, back to the coins. Now, I think that this is a... I'm not sure what it is exactly. It looks like a letter J right here. Yeah. Now, I think that might be, you know, a chop mark. Uh, now, chop marks were marks. You'll see them mostly on the old pieces of eight. I don't have one to show you, but you'll you'll see them on... Probably because on, I bought them all. <laughs> yeah, because people bought the heck out of them. You buy them usually. Sorry. But now, these are the old... Now, actually, this has one on it. And this is this is just to show. This is, like, not a yeah, real one. Yeah, these ones. are not real ones. But there's a chop mark here or an assay mark to show you that it's real. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a coin you would have broke up. This is two bits. This is eight bits. Now, if you have a two-bit coin with a chop mark on it or an assayer on it, it becomes automatically three bits. It hmm. gives it prestige and more value. Ah. It's a little 
thing that a lot of people don't know. I don't know, yeah. But these are all not real. This is four marks, of course. That's cool stuff. Now, this is an 18, 1805. Look at this quarter. It's almost as big as a half at all. Now, is that a chop mark? Now, 30, 40 years ago, if you had a piece of eight with chop marks, they would sell you those for like 12 bucks. Damn. Now they have a prestige because they have more character. Yep. And the chop box mostly came out of the South China Sea when you had the opium trade and the trade with China in India went through China. Uh, the British with their clipper ships, uh, they would send in, they would send in and they'd be trade, they would pick up tea there and they would trade it for opium. And you had the, India, England fought a war with China over opium called the Opium Wars which China lost back in 1897. And then China had to give England Hong Kong for 100 years. And in 97, they turned it back over with a 50-year deal contract or agreement that you wouldn't change the way that, that Hong Kong would be self-governing for another 50 years. So we know what happened there. Uh, but that's a different story. But that's where it came from, the Opium Wars. And you wanted, what happens is we had to make, we made the trade dollar. And you had to make a trade dollar to compete with the, uh, the Spanish eight reals. Because the Spanish eight reals were slightly heavier than trade dollars. Than the U.S. silver dollars. So we made a trade dollar which weighs an extra couple of percent more, or one percent more, than an actual silver dollar. Trade right. dollars are heavier than the U.S. Morgans. Gotcha. So begin it doesn't sound like a big deal, but if it was if if the the reals when you broke it down into melted silver was against US dollars, if you lost three or four cents and you're doing a, a whole ship worth of, of stuff for say twenty thousand dollars, well for two or three hundred dollars you could find yourself thrown overboard. <laughs> so it was a lot of money to them. Sure. And that's basically what we had to do. But the chop mark, I mean, I've had coins with 50 chop marks on it. Yeah. You would think you looked at the last 20 and you right? don't believe this guy? Yeah. I mean, come on. How many more chop marks do you need? Really? I think this is a chop mark. Well, but I discounted it anyway. Let me ask you this question. So there's some debate with like the trade dollars and the, um, the eight reals, like you mentioned, with the chop marks, whether or not it's damage or a piece of the coin's history. So when they get graded, they say damaged, right? I don't know if they still, I don't I haven't sent in any recently. It, like I said, a generation ago, it used to be considered damaged. Two gener 30 years ago, 40 years ago was damaged. Even 25 years ago. Yeah. But about 20 years ago, it, feelings about it changed. And they, it started to be acceptable, or it gave the coin more charisma, more character. I mean, I've seen coins certified that said chop marks. It doesn't say damage, it says chop marks. Yeah. I mean... All right, just as your opinion, since you're a coin collector too, what do you think? I think I'd rather have it without the chop marks. Yeah. But I could... Set, it's almost like pirate money with chop marks. That gives it a lot of character. It's still very interesting. Yeah. If I'm collecting pieces of eight, I got to have some chop marks on it. I got to have some with that because that's part of the era and part of the allure of the time. You almost have to look at the ones that are plain as like, okay, are these real? Because they don't have a chop mark. Because you're just so used to seeing it. And, well, the, exactly. The same thing with trade dollars. There's a lot of trade dollars with dollars. There were times when they would throw them in the melter. I remember back in 1980, when I was doing the shows over at 110, I'm talking, you know, I'm, I'm a couple of generations older than a lot of my competitors and colleagues. And I remember in 1980 when people were selling, when you had the Hunt Boys trying to corner the market, and silver was $50 an ounce. Think about it. 41 years ago, silver at $50 an ounce compared to now. What was $50 in 1980? It's got to be three. It's got to be equal to $150 in dollars now when you look at 40 years of inflation. I mean, you could have bought a new car for $10,000 in 1980. Um, but I remember there was nobody to sell to. You didn't have people like me who were buying and people buying the silver for fear. The only people you sold your silver to were smelters. And the smelters melted everything. I had a friend of mine who was a dealer for years and years, and he opened his own smelter. 
He was melting 10,000 coins a week, he said. Wow. 10, 1,000 bags of silver coins a week. Oh, man. And he was making these, uh, making 10, 50, I think he was making 50 ounce bars. I think it was Phoenix was his brand. But you had no competition in those days. You know, they, they the only people you could sell to were the wholesalers. There was nobody saying, hey, I'll buy that $100 face. Could you imagine? But I remember getting 30 times, 35 times face for silver. Imagine this kind of stuff that got melted that I, could in, have been worth. I watched dealers at big shows. In 1980, it was a funny time because of the price of silver. And I've heard and seen dealers breaking out the CC dollars, the, the government issue ones. Mm -hmm. You'd go to a show and it was like crickets. You'd hear all this cracking. There was somebody somewhere breaking three or five of them they just bought because they wanted the coins. They wanted them to sell. People didn't want them in the plastic. Then you had other guys who were dumping everything in the bags. I watched them dumping Walking Liberty half dollars, uncirculated rolls of like 43, 45, beautiful, shiny, clean rolls, dumping them into bags. You were getting 35 times face. Wow. $17. Six months earlier, an unk was selling for nine bucks. Now you can get 17 for them for melt. People were cleaning out the inventory, looking under their bed. They were pulling everything they could find, and they were melting everything. That's wild. I remember that was those were crazy times. I would buy at one dealer who was very conservative, and I would take it to the one ten show, and I could do a deal and flip a coin, make two hundred bucks in twenty minutes. Jeez, it was, that's about what I made a week cooking at the hospital. I mean, it was heady times. It was the fun of the game, and it's like I do now. It's like they said, the fun of the game. The I love game. what I do. Guy, let me uh, backtrack for a second. Talk to me about the uh, the government issued Carson Cities. They were made for the government issued Carson Cities were put out in the early seventies, and I believe you paid twenty nine thirty nine dollars a piece. The really expensive ones, and they were basically the they went all the years. I don't think there was any seventy nines, but I've had seventy eights. Uh, they were mostly the 81, 82, 83. Actually, I have one in the case. I heard tale from uh, one of the old timers. He says that uh, everything was done through the post office. You go down there and you fill out how many you want, blah, 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 and you do it through I the post office. I remember seeing ads in the newspaper, on, in the Long Island Press, in the uh, Newsday, and they would have them. Now, these, I'm not going to say these came out of, uh, you know, this, see, this is an early holder. Ooh. Now, this is what they call a rattler. People love those. Yep. Now, they were very conservative, but I think they got this one about right. And that's but why they love could, them, right? And this could have come out of uh, a GSA holder. Now, when you break one out of GSA, they want it on the label. But 35 years ago, they couldn't care. And this could have come out of one. And they would just break it out, put it in there. Can I see this one? Sure. Now, the years that are really big money in the CCs are the 90 and 91. Now tell us about the, the Rattler holders and why a lot of collectors like these things. They were very conservative in those days. And the premise was that they would guarantee the coin to sell at the grade they set. So basically, you didn't have to worry if there was a dispute as to the grade. They would buy it back at gray sheet for this grade. Gotcha. So they were conservative. And, um, and that's what it was. I mean, Rattlers sell. I, there are people who really go to old shows and old collections, and you'll look, and sometimes you'll get a dime that'll blow you away. I once had a PCI holder, which is like a third level grading service that was around. And I had a, uh, a bust half dollar, it was I think a 19, 1824. Beautiful coin. And I'm looking at it, and I, I pulled it out about 10 years ago, and I'm looking at it, and I'm saying, wow, this coin's an AU5050, AU50. That's impossible. I sent it in 10 GC, came back a 61. Wow. Bang, I made a thousand bucks. Jeez. I still have that coin. Yes, yeah. I collect them. That's but cool. But sometimes there's a discretion. And if you get a coin that's got, you know, full bell, bell lines or it's a, a beautiful dime and it's a 66, and sometimes they take your breath away and should I send this in? If you get a 68, it's, a, it's an absolute home run. Absolute home run. And that's what that was part of that. That's cool. And like I said, that went on for a while. And I, you still, you don't see as many as you used to anymore. But a lot of them get the band on them. They don't want to break them out, the GSAs. But they have a small premium over these. And you got to really look at the coin and say, hey, 
Do I send this in? What do you think? This is a pretty one right here. Also, people don't know with the uh, the rattlers, how they end up moving. They yeah. end up twisting in the case. Because they're slightly, they, they, left, they left a little scutch. A little scutch? What does scutch mean? You hear that? Yeah, is that the scutch? That's the scutch. <laughs> the, the rattler means that they move around. There's a little space. There's some room in the plastic. Maybe when it cooled, yeah. it didn't quite give it tight. But it'll rattle if it's a penny, a dime, a dollar. There you go. Yep, they're rattlers. That's why they call them rattlers. Now we now we kind of pinch around the coin so they don't move around yeah. and stuff. Now we don't. Well, they they now they're pretty tight on them. Yeah, that's what they do on those. What's you got in here? What what are these ugly things, guy? What are these? These are silver eagles. Uh, call them ugly. Come on, man. These are silver eagles that somebody painted. Ugh. And they uh. I can't. I, that's not. I'm not a fan. I got a guy <laughs> coming in who wants a bunch of these for for gifts. You can I you can these. actually get that off of there. Yeah, you just dump them and you can soak them in acetone and it comes off. Gee whiz. I got somebody coming in once about four of them. But these are silver eagles. Yeah. I mean, believe me, if I got a 96 like this, I'm going to soak it in acetone. Uh, <laughs> so but, you, don't, you don't agree with it either. <laughs> well, I could, I could soak all these if I want. But, you know, I'm getting a monster box hopefully tomorrow. I don't need to go to that length. Nah. But, you know, you sell these. I sell these for a couple of dollars cheaper. But if you go to buy them, they come in a box and they get like 39 49 Sometimes I bet at some point people paid more than a regular eagle for these oh, colorized ones. I had one that I think T Tara took. It was breathtaking. It was beautiful. I mean, somebody did it in a high enamel with a deep crimson red and blues, and he did both sides. I mean, that one must have sold for a hundred dollars. Yeah. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful eagle, and uh, and that's what they did. I mean. But these, you know, with silver, that's what counts. That is what counts. You know, if you're going to pay $30 for a regular eagle, what's wrong with this at 28 You know, when Mel Gibson has these in Thunderdome, they'll still trade for a bottle of water <laughs> or ride on that, that, you know, that catamaran when the world is covered in water. I don't know. Catamaran. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know, back to the beginning silver stuff. What about, like, Roosevelt Dimes? Very popular. Every, any science fiction I've ever read, Everybody has dimes in their go bag. Yeah. They're very easy to work with. Um, you know, it's like I tell people, you want to be able, you don't have to, you know, it's no brain surgery, and you just want, you know, fractional currency. You got them ready You know, to you don't want to start with a, a 30, a kilo of silver, or even a 100 ounce, I see 1,000 ounce bars. That's insane. But, you know, for the average person, you want dimes, quarters, halves. 10 ounce bars are nice to stack. But if you have a lot, a lot of money to invest, fifty or a hundred thousand, you can buy silver. But you know, if you're worried about taking the money and run, you don't want to have to load seven hundred pounds of silver in your pickup. Right. You know, you want to take the ammunition box and run. Sure. And that's what happens with that. Um, Roosevelt dimes would be an easy uh, set to put together too, don't you think? Oh yeah. There's no key dates. The forty nine S is your better date in there. But they're, they're you know, especially in circulated. There may even be some mercs in here. Isn't that amazing? He just knows the key dates like that. He's the yeah. he's the coin guy. He knows. Well, it's, you know, it's it's 50 years of doing this as a kid at my on my bed, you know, sorting through pennies and stuff and looking at the red book for half a century and your mind almost photographs the, the coins. You know, person calls you and says, well, you know, I got a 1910 penny. And I say, it's like 190 million of those made. You know, it's not even a big deal. It, it just isn't. A 1919, 1919, 19S penny has almost the same mintage. There's almost 200 million of either one of those. They made a lot of them. Yeah. They're not, you know, they're just pennies. You know, retail, yeah, somebody might give you a 20 cents for one, but I'm not going to pay 20 cents for one. You, they come across too many. But I've done, I used to sort pennies. I used to have the girls in the money room at a &S. I used to pay 60 cents a roll for wheat pennies. And the girls up in the money room... Now, a and Abraham and Strauss was a big department store in Babylon, and the girls would sort the pennies for me, and I paid 60 cents for every roll. In other words, they gave me $5 in pennies, and I gave them $6, and they would do that wow. for a dollar. Nice. Maybe they liked me, too. Yeah. But uh, You're a likable guy, I think. Yeah, right? I think so, but that's what <laughs> I would do. And he usually brought me $5 at a time, and there was still a lot of wheat pennies out there in, in 1971, 72, 3. You know, and I used to pick up a lot of wheat pennies that way. That's cool. And then I would take them home and I'd sort them. Never got a 1909 SVDB or anything. 
found some in the teams, but never, never, cherry, never really cherry picked one from them. Um, but they're still out there. We got plenty of the old silver dollars, which have character. The walk is impartial to. I've always enjoyed collecting walk and liberties. I mean, I put a walk and liberty set together before I did pennies. I never was a penny person. I liked Indians, but you know, I didn't much collect the others. I like flying eagles uh, a lot. Yeah, flying eagles are cool. I always worry about getting a little green spot on it. Like, oh my God. Yeah. What do you do now? How's it gonna come off? Yeah, you know, that becomes really, and it doesn't get any better. You know, it's, you know, look at the Statue of Liberty. Every certain amount of years, you've got to, uh, to replate the copper about every hundred years, give or take. And uh, you gotta worry about that. We sold out of all the Eisenhower dollars. All oh, the that Eisenhower nice book that gone. you had? Yeah, I had four, four of them, and I got calls for 10. Yeah, that was a I was able book. to put another one together. I have another book, but it's just missing two coins. But if somebody wants it for 20 bucks less, it's just missing two of them. Uh, but I had the Dance Go Bucks, so I was able to put together five I sold, but I got calls for 10. Yeah. Um, what about that foreign pile you were doing there? Is that, you have any more of those? The, the bags of silver? I yeah. sold the last one today. Jeez. Yeah. So You're selling out, man. Um, I probably have enough from another bunch I bought yesterday. Uh, a bunch of stuff a guy found in the floorboards of the house he bought four years ago. A bunch of foreign, nothing nothing breathtaking, but there's enough odds and ends of silver in there that I might be able to put another bag together, but it's too early to see yet. But, uh, but it's been a great year, um, and I want to wish everyone a happy, a, a happy New Year and a Merry Christmas, and God bless America. Thank you, you Keep seeing me. I enjoy the comments. Um, another year's coming. Thanks, guy. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye Take bye. care. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah.